Welcome to Intercede Daily. How are you doing today after more than a month of quarantine? Do you feel confined and isolated? Take heart. Remember that we are never confined and isolated if our hope is in the Lord. He is always with us. Amen? I'd like to share with you Psalm 25 verses 4 to 5. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. In this psalm, we see two things. First, that David's hope is in God, his Lord and Savior. And second, that this hope causes him to seek, listen to, learn from, and follow God in difficult circumstances. And so I ask you, do you hope in the Lord like David? I'm reminded of a story of a man crossing a frozen lake on foot. He strongly believed the ice formed on top of the lake was thick enough to step on and walk through. And so he did. Unfortunately, the ice was thin and cracked so that the man fell in. You see, it's not really the size of the man's faith that mattered, but the object of his faith. If the object of this faith, the ice, was really thick enough to walk on, then he would have crossed safely. With David, we see that he put his faith in God, his Lord and Savior, not in himself or his men. And God did indeed hold him up in times of trouble. The Bible is replete with records of God saving David or giving David victory over his enemies. There's the story of Goliath that we are so familiar with. And many years of David running from King Saul. The God of David, his Lord and Savior, is the same Lord and Savior we have today. Jesus so friends, let us not be dismayed, even if we hear that uncertainties, challenges, and difficulties will most likely linger for months to come. We have a great God, the same God who gave David victory over the giant Goliath. But as we hope in the Lord and pray, let us also be attentive to what God has to say. Sometimes we want God to immediately change the situation we are in, but God may also be using the situation to change us, making us into a better version of ourselves. Let's pay attention to Him. Listen to Him speak to your heart as you pray. We see David doing this in verses 4 and 5. When he says, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. You see, as we hope in the Lord and pray, it should change us. Notice the things God does as we draw close to Him. He shows us His ways, teaches us His paths, and guides us in His truth. Again, David's God is the same God we have. Just as he interacted with David constantly, he does the same with us as we pray. So what has God been speaking to you about during this lockdown period? Has God shown you some things you have neglected when you were busy with work? Maybe your relationship with your family or a conflict with a friend that was never resolved? Is it teaching you new ways to build stronger relationships? For others, maybe God is challenging your penchant for buying things you don't really need, reminding you about the truth of eternity versus the temporal. I'm sure there are many things the Lord wants to speak with you about. Let's practice praying with attentive hearts. In closing, Friends, we have a big God. 
He can and will surely carry us through this difficult time. But not only that, like David, when he emerged from hiding from King Saul, yes, for years he was living in caves, isolated, quarantined, to borrow a more familiar term these days, until God brought him out. He was an improved version of himself, fit to be king. We too can come out of this difficult circumstance brought out by God, better equipped to face a bigger, newer role. Like David, I pray we will come out of this trying time declaring Psalm 18 verses 18 and 19. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because He delighted in me. Let us now pray through the following prayer points. Ask God to speak to your heart as you wait and hope in Him during this period of quarantine. Pray for healing for those who are sick and protection for all, especially those in fr the front lines and those who are most vulnerable. Pray for wisdom for our leaders in government and also in the private sector in making decisions that impact lives and livelihoods during this lockdown and beyond. Let's pray. Father, Father in heaven, creator of all things, visible and invisible, we praise you. We worship you because you are worthy. We thank you for your great love. By the blood of Christ, you have counted us righteous by grace through faith. And because of it, we can be bold to come before you in prayer and know that you hear us. Father, as we wait and hope in you during this time of enhanced community quarantine, we pray that you help us indeed. Use our time wisely. Open our eyes, our spiritual eyes too, to see what you want us to see, to learn the lessons we need to learn. Guide us, Lord, by your wisdom and grace as we navigate through this trying time. Once again, we pray for healing for those who are sick. We pray for your hand of protection on everybody, especially on those most vulnerable, the senior citizens among us, those who are, whose health are already compromised, our frontliners in the medical field, those who are tasked to maintain peace and order, those who are in the delivery of essential services. Father, be with us. And for all leaders in government and even in the private sector, we pray you give them extra wisdom as they look for solutions to save lives and livelihoods during this lockdown period and even beyond. Guide them, Lord. Lord, I mean, guide them, Lord towards the best response, the best solutions in the different and continuously evolving situations. Lord, you are our refuge, our strength, our hope. Hear our prayer, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, that's it for today. And as we continue in an attitude of prayer and reflection, think about or discuss the following reflection, discussion, questions. God bless. <music>